Alex answer here it is July 20th in the year 2018 we're going to be doing some uh, reading letters to the editor letters to the YouTube channel one from Rick one from Joe now I've actually done a few recordings and the audio wasn't good so I'm doing this again and I believe that the things that they are sharing right echo a lot of the feelings that a lot of you have I've been discussing this light side and dark side of the conspiracy research community and there's a part of us that are waking up so I want to be brief on on this part and then we'll come back to it uh, sign up for the newsletter at alexanceree.tv I'm gonna to try to make improvements to that and I'm looking to hear some feedback as I send them out that you're getting them we need to bypass the social media algorithm I'm hearing more from people like Joe that there are people that used to watch my content that are only only just now finding me sometimes they might think about me and type in my name and uh, subscribe again right people have found themselves unsubscribed from my uh, YouTube channel what I don't want to do is be a victim or to feel like a victim right even if we have this machine working against us and we do the disinformation that is out there on the internet as I've shared in many videos makes it difficult to even really enjoy sometimes uh, the beautiful nature of rural Colorado to even have the will to go out and uh, and hike. There's a lot of people out there that don't like outsiders, whether they be new to Colorado or a perceivable outsider or non-desirable because of some other reason. Somebody has to have a warrior spirit. Having said that, I think I'm going to make it a, a goal after I upload this to go out for a few hours today and um, change things up, record a video, Go hiking. So that's what I'm going to do later today. So let me read a little bit here from Joe. Now, I, I deactivated my Facebook page because I wanted people, I, I reactivated it, but for a while it was deactivated because I want to draw attention at the very least to the alexansory.tv webpage, but also Facebook page. But I left it back open because they already have our data. It's not going to change anything by, by deactivating our page. Because I'm a public person, you know, I, I don't mind hearing from people, whether they be in the state. I always like hearing from people that are within my state, new people in the state of Colorado, as well as uh, people from back home, back home in Portland, Oregon, the old country. It's now morphed into whatever it is now. Also messages from Europe. And so for that reason... For that reason, it's worth it, but I, I do continue to think about other mediums other than Facebook that aren't just other social media sites run by like, you know, a few people, you know, something that runs like Facebook, but isn't Facebook. I'm not looking for that. Um, I'm looking for uh, better forum options and more effective ways of delivering email updates to you, for example, if you sign up at alexanthory.tv. Because we need to already be in practice of bypassing these main websites that can be controlled to continue to reach our audiences. Hearing from Joe and Rick were both reminders of that. So he writes that it's nice to see others that can see through this reverse psychology BS. For those that are hearing this for the first time, it's the false narrative that the establishment hates Alex Jones and or Donald Trump. The reality is when you get free publicity to the tune of millions of dollars, establishment doesn't hate you. Establishment's hooking you up in a big, big way. And uh, Alex Jones has received many, many new listeners and followers. So I have some of these organizations uh, like the Proud Boys and others. They have new recruits by the thousands in some of these uh, cities in America uh, because of this promotion that is taking place of the fighting going on in any town USA, Main Street USA. There are people on both sides of the aisle that feed on the violence that comes about from street fighting. And so a, a lot of this reverse psychology that we're seeing right now in 2018 is geared towards getting people fighting amongst each other within our own nation. It, it can be a war of words in the troll section or it could be actual fights in the street, actual assaults taking place that are captured now on YouTube available for all of us to see what's become of our fellow countrymen and women. 
Uh, he also writes, I believe everything is fake and these politicians are just actors. I stumbled upon a couple of your videos after years of losing track of you. Not sure how I lost track. See, here's another. Not sure how I lost track because I remember you were one of the regular um, videos, video channels for me. I watched your last one about Trump while surfing YouTube. I typically assume most people that speak out and aren't dead are controlled opposition. But I always had a good vibe about you and I don't buy into this establishment BS. And I'm the guy most of my friends thinks has a screw loose. But I have, he continues, I have caused a few people to snap out of their media-induced coma and see how things really work. Not sure what kind of input that you get from people, but I just want to let you know that I appreciate the time that you put into your videos from the past and look forward to the more recent ones. And I reminded him because the algorithm, keep watching youtube.com slash Alex Ansary. Manually see what's up with me. Manually remember, I am trying to also manually come up with new ideas on a personal note for alternative media websites featuring news that I think is relevant, that is outside the left-right paradigm. Um, some news, some websites have a lot of things that um, if someone's going to be um, trying to keep me within the t paradigm or if it's all fear-based, I may not return. Um, I like spiritual things, but I steer away from the fake New Age websites, absolutely. Project Camelot related websites, things like what I showed the other day, things that are calling what's happening now, the Ascension, something that the Galactic Federation of Light is looking upon favorably, this Trump-Putin meeting, that's disinformation. And there are people that are being infected in these quasi-spiritual circles and research communities. Uh, going back to Joe's message, people don't want to believe that it is as controlled as it is. Honestly, I don't blame them. Part of me wishes I can go back to being brainwashed by Rush Limbaugh like I was in the early 90s and blame the Dems for all the evil in the world. The establishment has placed so many turds in the punch bowl, the average person disregards anything conspir considered conspiracy theory. Of course, unless it's them with their conspiracy theory, then it's right, right? It's the average Trump supporter, their average conspiracy theory, it's all the Clintons, it's all the Soros or the left-based conspiracy theory, that all the racism and all the corruption, white supremacy is on the right. That's their own conspiracy theory, right? This, this Trump-Russia collusion, but Obama's innocent, George Bush Jr. is innocent. They have their own conspiracy theory. Neither is in line with the balance of the truth. Neither is in line with the truth. People like Joe see that. People like others are seeing that. Uh, now we will bring up the next email. Feedback from different people. You know, over the years, some people like to talk about conspiracies like it's a sport. Like, hey, what do you think about this person or that person? Um, there's a lot of people out there, for the most part, that have just, they're, they're energy drainers. The only real sabotage that I feel like I've dealt with in the real world hasn't been the government. It's been people that have developed online fixations. However, the issue that we're dealing with the algorithm, not getting enough views, despite the fact that I have 15,000 subscribers, I don't want to feel like a victim or that someone's doing that. I don't want to feel powerless, but it feels like almost that they may have a program in place where if you talk about certain things or if you talk about it in a certain context, I, I talk about Russia and China and the future and theories that I have about a, a plan to occupy the U.S. And I, I've been doing that before people were even talking about World War III or at least the, the potential of a, of a conflict between Trump and China because I was talking about it before Trump was on the scene. And I wasn't making about any president trying to be our savior or our ultimate enemy. Just it doesn't matter. There are people that are placed and selected in power. They carry out the agenda for a number of years and then we're off to the next person. But the agenda... Just like in game, right? Alex Jones. Talk about in plain sight than going around and serving those eugenicists, being a part of the in game, dehumanizing Muslims to make way for the depopulation agenda of the third world. You see, not everybody can see in plain sight the cruelty, the satanic agenda as people are smeared around the world, as their worlds continue to be bombed back to the Stone Age without those people saying that they're opposed to that bombing back to the Stone Age. Now they're silent. Now there's, we look at Afghanistan in the news. Hundreds of thousands of bombs dropped in 2018. 
an increase of tens of thousands of bombs dropped in 2017. How does that feel? Just stay right at that point. We go from tens of thousands of bombs of uh, killing people in 2017. Now it's 2018, Afghanistan. The Afghans are being killed in a much larger number through multiple means, including those groups down on the ground that are likely controlled. In fact, most people already know that by now. But yet when those controlled groups, ISIS, kill Afghans, all of a sudden you're not really hearing a whole lot of criticism, are you, about the atrocities of ISIS, ISIS. I guess maybe in the eyes of some people, as long as they're killing off a common enemy, the Afghans, others, right? They don't have much of a protest against what ISIS, ISIS is doing over there, which is actually created by their system. It's not organic as they use IS, IS, the fear of, to call Syrian immigrants subhuman, you see? And we're supposed to accept this as normal. I would say that the devil, the demiurge, head archon, is hard at work, time to compromise as many souls as possible. So there could be people that you know, right, right now, people on the internet, they're already, their soul's already taken. Don't even bother trying to reason with them. Don't listen to their taunts. Don't listen to their insults. Don't give any energy to their death threats and their ramblings. And they're screaming in all caps in the comment section, often in the name of Yahweh for some odd reason or some other religious deity or creating their own religion as they go, screaming 14 words and other words and things of that nature, just on and on and on. There are people out there that admittedly want to do wrong, right, to people. Notice how nobody bothers them. Some of the people that are out there in the alternative media. And notice some of the, the black power speakers that aren't trying to heal people, but even promoting racism against white people. Have you ever wondered why they have very few dislikes? Why the trolls on our channels aren't over there bothering them when they're actually declaring war? It's because those people are serving the archons and the dark side by promoting their own side of racism. So our own trolls won't go over there to give them dirt because they're not admittedly trying to wake anybody up. People like us are. People like us are trying to wake people up from the left-right paradigm, from the cult mentality, the cult of personality, memes that Alex Jones has popularized through his cult of personality. People like me are opposed to that. We want to help people wake up. Sometimes we'll be accused of what the other people are actually guilty of. This is called projection. And this has actually become a very common psychological ailment that we're seeing in our world on different levels. I'm so distracted by this pretty uh, progressive uh, uh, ad, this, this, this lady. She's, anyway, I'm looking at my email and this mind control is already. Okay, so Rick, Rick writes, um, let's see how much of the email I already got into. I'm doing a re-recording because my last audio was crap. Okay, so this is really, really important because I've said for years that a lot of people may have thrown me under the bus in the past because maybe I didn't agree with them then. Very few times do you actually hear back from people from the past. I've said this. He's been listening, he says, for over half, half a year. He must have heard that. So I'm just going to read what he has to say. Dear Alex, you may remember me. I'm Rick. And I was a frequent caller to your radio show back in the days when you were on Oracle. And I think I do. I don't remember the specific, um, all the different names, but I remember that was a significant time in my life going from cable access TV to Oracle broadcasting um, because it reached people around the world in a whole different way. He continues, and I'll just keep reading. But sometime, I think it was 2009, we had a falling out and it had to do with disagreements over Alex Jones and, and others thinking you were some sort of controlled agent or something, and I was wrong. I want to apologize and admit that there have been things that I've been wrong about, and I have made mistakes. Uh, I aired my own show from 2010 to 2012, but then became silent ever since, except for a few YouTube comments here and there. Going away from active engagement online to sitting back and watching silently has given me a lot of time to think and sort things out. Now I'm going to pause. And say that I think that a lot of us were targeted, that were involved in Oracle Broadcasting. What he goes on to share with me, by the way, confirms that sense of evil that I felt from at least one of the founders of Oracle. 
I don't know how much of it I want to get into, but let me just read what he has to say. I He says, I want to say that I've been watching your channel for about half a year now and I have nothing but respect for you making it off the grid. That's a hell of a lot better than me and many other so-called truthers out there. Watching your videos made me aware that I was entirely misinformed about you and misjudged you. But in the days of Oracle, there was a lot of bickering going on and an almost witch hunt mentality that many people got caught up in of calling other researchers out as controlled opposition and accusing people needlessly of being shills. Now I understand that there were genuinely people out there that did turn out to be agents, people like Alex Jones, which you've also realized, and certain high-profile players that would later go on to become white nationalists, alt-right guys, orchestrators of events like Charlottesville. Some of them you and I knew personally from the Oracle crowd, but there were also a lot of genuinely independent producers of talk show material that were just trying to do their best to research and present their truths. And many of these got accused by myself and others of being a part of the larger conspiracy. Sometimes it was hard to tell who was genuine and who was not. And there was a culture of paranoia. I too made mistakes in the process. I'm going to pause Rick out of all the different letters that I've gotten over the years of people saying they've got it wrong or that's rare anyways. So that's a big, like, personal thing to do that. Because we're in the society where we're taught we're always right. We're always right. I was wrong to even promote Alex Jones on a smaller level in, in Portland. Even if it brought me and others together, there were some people that just knew he was up to no good. <laughs> and I may not agree with them, and I certainly don't agree with a lot of leftists and Democrats for not giving a damn about 9-11. If it wasn't like an issue like that and others, I would trust a lot more... Um, Dems, if you will. I, I I wish... I don't know if any of you guys think that there's any hope to talking about 9-11 again in a new way. Let me know if you do and what would be that way. But we just can't give up before we pass away. You know what I'm saying? Like, it may not be the time now, but in, in the same way that it took a long time and some people still don't even care about what was done to the Native Americans. But some people do. But it didn't, it didn't occur right away for people to really realize that this country was taken. Well, with regards to the Native Americans of the East, in these countries that have lived by the old ways, their own off-the-grid ways, that now live under the thumb of the drone, they have already had or are having their end of the world. They teach us to be narcissistic and to have our own Terminator theories about the robots coming after us while we sit by while robots in real time go after them. Not in the future, but now. And for that to be a part of our discussion and our criticism to then the drone attacks of innocent civilians being erased from the table. And people with concerns about the victims of war no longer being on these networks. And the narrative changes. Now, it's not easy for me now in this podcast to explain how the dark evil, which I think is beyond human, socially engineers clicks of humans to maintain the status quo, which changes day to day, but it does. Future literary works from yours truly is going to focus on how the dark forces created things like the alt-right to steer our movement into the ground. I, I will ask you to write Write like your life depends on it. Share your creativity. Share what you think is going on. Start a blog. But we could be some of the few people on the planet they are going to be the ones to actually expose it. We are outnumbered. There, there's a growing number of people that are angry at what's happening with Trump, but they don't understand the left-right paradigm. Some people we can wake up. Some people we can't. Some of us need to do more research to really understand how deep the rabbit hole goes. That goes for some of my audience members. That goes for myself as well. I don't know everything. And so we have to constantly challenge ourselves to keep our own B BS at bay and to keep an open mind because things are not as they seem. As I said in a previous podcast, Alex Jones woke me up to a certain degree about the new world order, but not in the way that you might be thinking if I were to say it. Just Alex Jones woke me up to the, like when you see his role, COINTELPRO style, in acting like he was the go-to for this information. In particular, martial law concerns, National Guard announcements of particular drills that were very detailed. 
And yet, oddly enough, Alex Jones was like the sole deliverer of this information about these martial law drills in late 2008 and 2009. Why would he be the sole information, the sole original source? Time after time, time after time. And, and now what we're seeing is making us feel a little bit ill. <laughs> Just like we have you know, this supposed intelligence officer saying that uh, this Putin uh, Trump meeting makes him feel ill and see how he's, he's on the world stage. You know what? He or others like him have got to be in on it. That's what makes me feel ill. They're misdirecting right now with the whole expose Trump the way that they're doing it. They're misdirecting to bat for the Democrats. Um, it is true that they're pushing for war, right? But this is a bipartisan push for war. We've seen this for multiple decades. Going back to Rick, uh, going off the grid and being able to truly see beyond the left-right paradigm to a deep level of psychological analysis of what drives people to fight has proven to me that you are genuine, and I hope that you accept my apology. Of course, and like I said earlier, uh, it's been a long road since uh, Oracle, and uh, it's been a little more difficult to share things on Facebook and, and YouTube. So as people start also seeing the success of others, if they start going outside the algorithm, reaching people directly with newsletters, one of the things that I'm looking for, I'm open to advice, are more effective ways either effective ways of writing newsletters or newsletter services, but you know, just going from YouTube to DTube to VidMe isn't a concrete solution. What I believe is developing a goal, then implementing that, putting it into action, and then giving it some time. The basics of trying to make something a success. Right now, it sounds like there's a lot of people that would like to continue to hear from me, despite the fact that I've dealt with challenges, opposition, slander, things like that. There's way more support and positive messages, especially now that are coming my way, than negative by far, if I haven't said that. Um, there were other periods, there might be moments like around the election where it just felt really dark and depressing. Right now, it's mostly positive. Um, yet I'm being totally transparent, honest with you that I sometimes feel depressed, drained and down, that I'm reaching way less because of what? Technology because I'm not caught up with the times, because all of my contacts are concentrated through Twitter and Facebook and the YouTube, and I, I need to start doing something new. Uh, I need to start thinking outside the box. I am going to keep using YouTube, despite the fact that YouTube has dramatically reduced our income, because the few people that are out there that have signed up at Patreon for just a few dollars per month, that support that comes in every month from the Patreon crowd at times is... And you see, it's just over $100. In some cases, that's more than what YouTube's bringing in or, or just a little bit less. What that does is enable me to continue doing what I'm doing, staying at the same spot, using this technology to not promote these alt-right means, but to be a genuine voice in the wilderness and to be a voice in the wilderness that isn't going to off himself when the, time gets, uh, when the times get tough. That doesn't mean that I don't suffer or deal with targeted individual stuff, psychic attack in my sleep. Um, I think that I'm attacked in my sleep to wake up with a certain level of trauma because it's happening every night, that there's something going on or trying to get at me within my sleep. And there's something about this evil, this world that wants us to feel traumatized, that wants us to feel not wanted. And I'm not going to be ashamed to say that I still go through those type of psychic attacks, despite the fact that I have some knowledge about how we can try to mediate it. But most of all, the reason I know what psychic attack is, is because I've gone through it. And there are periods or things that we do that may help us strengthen our mind. Sometimes it could be a genetic thing, why we're able to hold off certain levels of programming with my particular makeup of, of, of genetics, not just what they are, but just the way I look at things. White supremacy means an ideology doesn't make sense to me. And also responding to white supremacy with hatred to whites doesn't make sense to me either. And that's the new meaning that's going to be building in the future to target whites. I don't support that. I don't support that at all. In fact, I'm going to have to be speaking against that as I grow older in this future, as people go on their witch hunts against whites. I'll have to be a leading speaker on that level 
Well, the very people that were trolling me in 2016, 2017 won't be saying that at all. They'll probably be in hiding if that type of reality does come. But see, in the end, when the smoke clears, there's not going to be a lot of people out there that showed consistent compassion for all the different perceptions of ethnicity and why it was important for us to not allow this world to turn us into a bunch of monsters. Whether you view your enemies as Republicans or Democrats, doesn't matter. You, you, you can be in that paradigm with your peers to the tune of millions. Don't act like you're alone as a Republican or a Democrat. If you have issues with society, if you have issues with family, it's not the liptards that screwed you. It's not the conservatives. It's people. If there was an issue with your marriage, right? If there was an issue with something, it wasn't a liptard or a conservative thing that did it. It was the fallout of this world of consciousness itself. When I look at my entire lifetime of being thrown under the bus, we see Democrats, we see Republicans, we see religious folks, we see Muslims, we see Christians, we see atheists. We see a sea of demographics throwing away the Alex Ansari message. With only a few hundred of you after 12 or 13 years seeing one upload as being worthy. Now, of course, you're starting to notice there's something to this, are you not? 12, 13 years, most of the people who have been on YouTube this long have 35,000 views per video. Is the message that bad? I'm certainly hearing from a lot of you that it's the only person giving this message. So why am I only at a few hundred views? How do we scientifically get out the scalpel and go, what is happening with technology and this Alex Answer YouTube channel? And what is the solution? Because if we can find a solution, I have 10 times more content within the cells, within my body, ready to explode like a volcano. But if no one's going to hear it, why put out that energy when it might be better to sit and meditate? So think about this, because I have the energy and I have the voice, but we need to make sure that you're on the newsletter. We need to make sure that people are getting the updates and I can use a technology advisor as a volunteer to really help me take everything that I've built up for 12 years, 13 years and take it to the next level. I wait with patience because the creator of all that is has blessed me with so many things. You know, I at least have a volunteer to help me with the back end dealing with plugins and website updates and techie stuff that I know nothing about. It's Wahili to me. Here's what I can do. I can write. I can speak freely while holding a microphone and speak off the top of my head without a script. I can do that. I can write. I can rant. But as far as marketing and getting it out there and maybe making enough to, to basic, basically make enough to make basic ends meet, sometimes some of those things are challenging when I'm just being a free flow thinker of the right brain. So again, very special thank you to those that donate on PayPal or are considering and then letting you know that there is a way you can donate on an automatic level per month at $5 a month. So I just mention it once in a while. Um, finishing up the email. This is a little bit longer than I expected. And again, the Geico ad next to my email is so creepy. with this uh, pretty brunette popping out of the screen. <laughs> During that time, I got to know a lot of people from the Oracle chat rooms, Rick writes, uh, particularly um, a certain individual, right, that I'm not trying to start a war with. So he cites somebody that seems to have been heavily radicalized within the alternative media, and he talks about the dark direction that this guy's showing in, and what I'm saying to Rick is, and this is like this is like the unseen knowing, like you just get a tone, not just like the anger, but just the tone of like a whole website. Why? Because of the people that are running a website. And it can infect literally the hosts and the audience members. Now, those people aren't really on the spiritual side or metaphysical side, so this may be stuff that they don't believe in or understand while they're into conspiracy stuff and to be frank, hate speech at this point, some of them. I think BlacklistTheNews.com has kept his nose clean for the most part, but he was also complicit in the absolute 100% deleting of everything that Alex Hansry ever did over at Oracle. But there must have been something powerful about whatever I was doing at Oracle because I would come to hear from people later on that it's a generic term, and it's not to be ego-driven to say it, but when you hear from people that we woke them up or that we were some of the first shows that they heard, like... Um, uh, Lennon Honor, 
said that about my program, that it was one of the first programs he found, if not the first. Of course, for a lot of people, then Alex Jones got a hold of people and had enough resources to keep producing content. There was periods in which I didn't go away for long periods, but weeks for sure. Periods in which I didn't have a home, periods in which I didn't have a studio, periods in which my audience was still small enough that I didn't have enough audience support to keep going. That's the big difference between me and say an average alt-right guy that's on YouTube with several hundred thousand subscribers and say $500 a month, $1,000 coming a hump a month from the collective sum of their audience over at Patreon. Look at some of these people and look at their links. It's rolling in. They're laughing all the way to the bank. As I say, the left has their foot on their neck. They're laughing all the way to the bank in studios. They're not off the grid. They're not living in vehicles. None of those guys are living in vehicles. There are people you're going to see ranting that live in a vehicle <laughs> on YouTube, but they're not like, this isn't the end result of their years of activism for the right or Donald Trump. A lot of them were saying they were going to be punished at the election of Donald Trump. And the reality is that's not true. That was a lie. Certain websites have had issues that have gone in certain directions. The average conservative YouTuber is doing better than he or she ever has in the history of their YouTube account. The same thing goes for those that are on the mainline left, for their growing explosive audiences on the controlled left. Kyle from Secular Talk, Cenk from the Young Turks. They are the controlled left. Controlled right, again, big viral YouTubers crying about being victims. Christopher Green, Alex Jones, people like Jordan Peterson, people like uh, Milo, all these people uh, crying about being victims and they're worldwide level celebrities. Worldwide level celebrities with all different types of merchandise and money coming in and fan clubs, all based around memes that they're being oppressed. And by holding up a meme, well, that meme was so marketable that a group's being oppressed that they can actually become millionaires saying that they're being oppressed by the left. And then people on the left in their main line, they can also become millionaires being oppressed by the, the Nazi right. While those of us that are individuals could end up attacked and left in the street by both.